Hi, everyone. So ServerPod Mini just dropped. Uh, it is technically in beta in like a in the 2.0 CLI, um, but based on what I read about it, it is completely stable and um, has tons of unit tests and everything's good to go. So what is ServerPod Mini? Well, first of all, what is ServerPod? And I've done a couple of videos on this topic. It is a really cool um, Flutter and Dart framework um, that lets you write Dart full stack, back end and front end, and sort of generates the code that lets both sides talk to each other, either through an API or through sockets. Uh, it uses generators, so you essentially can define models and your Flutter code will understand the shape of them and vice versa. Uh, it's a really cool project. Um, you know, I'm trying to make this a pretty condensed short video since it is covering um, ServerPod Mini. Um, so definitely check out sort of the uh, other videos I've made. Um, and I'm actually working on a another larger form content video for ServerPod because uh, 1.2 came out rather recently. There's been some pretty great changes in there that uh, I've started working on that video. It's just looking like it's going to be a pretty long one. Uh, and I figured maybe I'll just shift gears and uh, do this. So what are we doing? Well, um, ServerPod Mini, to explain that, first of all, um, is a really stripped down version of ServerPod. Biggest difference is there's no longer a database uh, built into it. So you don't have to worry so much about DevOps. You don't have to worry about using um, Docker. Uh, it just works right out of the box. Um, meaning maybe you're trying to build something that doesn't need a database. So you can get rid of that huge overhead there. Uh, another possibility is you want to use like a Mongo database or something like that. Um, bring your own database, whatever. Uh, you can, of course, you know, use it in that way. So just think of it as a light version, easier to get going. Um, the setup is really simple. There's not, there's no Docker again, so um, it's it's pretty good. Uh, so um, what we're going to be building is essentially a multiplayer trivia game where the server is actually going to be ongoingly, um, whether there's players or not, kind of be broadcasting out different questions, and players can go in and um, try and answer these things. And see, I got incorrect. I don't know much about whiskey or molasses, I guess. <laughs> and uh, you can play with multiple people. Um, I'm the only one here right now with a score of one. And we're going to allow people to sort of like react, you know, to these sort of things um, to be, you know, excited or angry about the questions with their other players. So again, this is multiplayer, meaning many people can come to this at the same time. And there's sort of a leaderboard and uh, everything's great. So basic enough, I think, to explain how ServerPod works. Um, and what I'm covering in here, you know, aside from the database side that you could add, um, also is applicable to um, just regular server pod. It's all the same principles. Uh, we're just not really persisting any data uh, in a database. So um, let's get into it. All right, so the first thing we need to do if you want to use this, because it's not actually part of the uh, 1.x release, it's part of uh, the upcoming 2.0, uh, what we need to actually do is activate uh, ServerPod with a specific version. So you'll see here I have Dart Pub Global Activate ServerPod CLI. That's the normal way just to get ServerPod CLI running um, in your environment. However, by putting in 2.0.0-alpha, Dot one, uh, we can actually activate that version. So we'll run this first. Now, in the case you're actually working on an active server pod project like myself, um, we can actually still flip back to the other one with no trouble simply by um, selecting a different version. So um, we did this, but we could change it to just uh, 1.2.3, which is the current um, live version, the release version, uh, in, the, in the case that you want to switch back to it. OK, so uh, we have that activated. Um, so now what we're going to do is actually um, get this project started. So I'm just simply going to run serverpod, um, which is the command that we would basically just installed by doing this. And we will do create. And I'm just going to call this um, mini trivia. And the difference here is we actually just put in dash dash mini to say, hey, we just want to bootstrap a mini server pod project instead of the whole thing. So we'll run this. And this is essentially installing and, and downloading all the files we need, setting up the project with the correct name uh, based on this. Uh, if this was a full server pod project, it'd also be generating your Docker file and creating configuration files with sort of some randomized passwords so that it's unique for that project, et cetera, et cetera. 
So now we just want to uh, cd into that directory and we'll see there's actually three folders here. Um, we have the server folder, the Flutter folder, and the client folder. I'm going to open all of these in VS Code, although sometimes I do on a server pod project actually open each of those folders in separate windows just to kind of make it easier for me to navigate around. Uh, but for the purpose of this tutorial, it'll probably be a lot clearer to everyone watching where we're working if we can see them all. So we have a client, we have Flutter, and we have server. Server is for our server side code. Flutter is obviously the Flutter app, and you'll see it is just set up like a normal Flutter project. And client is a folder you really don't have to worry about. Um, it is essentially all the generated code. It's the bridge between your server and your client. So we're all pretty familiar with um, just the Flutter side of this. This is just the example project. Um, it's a little bit different than the counter app, but same sort of idea. We just have a main, we have our you know, my app, material app, and then there's a little bit of a, sort of a stateful widget here used to um, run this example project, which we will see in a moment. Uh, the server side code, which you will be less familiar with, um, essentially the way it's set up is we have a lib folder we have the server.dart, but really, uh, unless you're configuring sp specific packages and plugins, um, you don't really have to do much in here. In the source folder, you'll see we have endpoints, generated, and models. So endpoints, these are like the API endpoints or even the things that communicate with sockets. Um, both are supported out of the box. Generated, again, don't really have to touch much here. These files get auto-generated based on our models. And the models are actually just configuration files where you can set um, what they uh, would have. So for instance, this example model has two fields, a name and uh, data, which is an integer. So pretty basic. And uh, just by creating these, um, it actually generates the Dart version of this. And if we look at that, you'll actually see, okay, it created this class that extends something called serializable entity, um, has the copy with, the to JSON, from JSON. So think of it a bit like freezed, um, but uh, not... Um, you're not doing it with like annotations in Dart. You're actually just configuring it in a YAML file, which is cool. In the endpoint, we can see the example endpoint, a bit of instructions here. But uh, we basically have a hello endpoint, and um, we just return hello with a name. So how do we actually work with this um, on the client side? We'll open the Flutter one again. We'll go to the main.dart. And what we'll see here is, uh, first of all, we instantiate a client. It's kind of like a singleton um, in this file of this client pointing to um, where our server will be running, which is on port 8080 by default. And um, in our code here, we can actually do things like this cal call hello function essentially goes client.example. So that's just the namespace really right here, uh, the name of the file, uh, dot hello. Um, so this code got automatically generated. Again, we don't have to touch this. We don't make any changes here. This is generated code. But uh, Flutter automatically knows what the server supports. Um, so it's like you know an end-to-end -end type safety kind of thing. It's really, uh, really awesome. Um, so this would actually hit that API endpoint and then do some stuff with it. So that's kind of how it works from just an API point of view. Um, and uh, we might as well pull up and run this example app. So in order to actually run um, server pod, there's a two-step process instead of just a normal Flutter app um, because we need the server running and we also need the front end running. So I'm opening up my terminal here and what I want to do is go into the server directory and I want to just run um, dart and then in the bin folder main.dart. So that is just referencing uh, this file here, bin main.dart. And all this really does is runs the run function within server.dart, um, which is that file we looked at that we don't really have to touch. So right there. So we have that. Um, the problem is, I believe I am still running um, an example project of this. So the port's already in use. So I'm just going to close that now and uh, rerun it. Meanwhile, I like to have at least two of my terminals open, kind of keep one for everything server side specific, one for Flutter. Uh, so we can actually go into the Flutter directory here by going back and then going into Flutter, just to kind of keep that ready in case we need to install Flutter packages or whatever. Um, from here, though, we can just open our Flutter main.dart. And of course, you can run this any way you would run a Flutter app, um, and it will work. But uh, you know, sometimes it's just nice to go here. I am going to switch this to uh, Mac OS, um, just because it, in my opinion, is a little more efficient to work with, uses less overhead. However, um, in order to do that, because we will be doing a network request, 
specifically on Mac OS, uh, we'll open up our debug profile entitlements, and we're actually going to add something here. And luckily, GitHub Copilot usually knows why I go into this file and <laughs> suggests it. Um, so I'm just adding in the uh, allowing client network. Um, you'd want to do this in your release entitlements too, um, but I'm not going to worry about that. So now we can click Run, and uh, we'll get this started up. So here's our app booted up. And I can just put my name in here, send it to the server, and I get back, hello, Tyler. So let's just step through exactly what's happening there to make it really clear. So um, the call hello function is being called, and I'm passing in just whatever's in that text controller. So calling this, although it goes through this sort of like generated code and whatnot, um, we don't really care about that. Basically, it's hitting this. You see the first parameter? The first parameter will always be session in something that you want to expose in the API. If you don't do that, it won't get generated. And if you're running your generator and you're wondering, why isn't this endpoint showing up? Um, I've made this mistake before and I'm missing this. Um, and this is kind of like, you can almost think of this as the build context version of the server side code. That's the way I like to think of it. Um, and uh, the second parameter is name. So in the generated code, this actually gets stripped out. So you'll see I didn't actually pass in session here. I just passed in this. And if we actually look at this, you'll see that um, the server endpoint um, only has name in there, not the not the session. And uh, we just return this. And you'll see it's marked as async, um, because generally an API request, uh, you're going to be doing something with it, accessing a database, calling another server, whatever. Uh, so it's just good practice to do as async. And in fact, at the end of the day, it will always be asynchronous. Um, even if uh, even if we didn't mark this as async, it's still, from Flutter's point of view, it's still calling the server. Even if the server doesn't have to execute it asynchronously, the entire request is async. So I just like to put it as async. And the example does that too, so we are good. OK, so that's basically what happens. It gets returned, and uh, back in the... Um, file that I, of course, closed, uh, we see we get the result back, and we actually just set state um, uh, the result message to result, and that's just what's being printed in there. So it's a very basic, uh, you know, just API example, but uh, gets, you know, the point across. OK, now to actually get into making some code here. So we're going to close up a bunch of things, um, and we're going to focus on the back end first. But there will be a, a lot of flipping back and forth, um, which is what's fun about ServerPod. You know, you're, you're building things kind of a, back, a bit of the back end, then a bit of the front end, a bit of the back end. You're going back and forth and back and forth, and it's really fun. Um, so uh, let's talk about our models here. So uh, we're going to go to our models, and we're going to make a few files here. I'm going to start by making a player.yaml file. So my player, we have to give it a class name. Generally, you'll make it the same name as the, as the file. Um, class, we'll call it player. And then we're going to give it some fields. So here, um, I want a player to have a name, string. I want it to have a score of int. Hey, it's kind of knows what it wants. And I'm also going to give it just an identifier. And this is kind of like a unique identifier that um, identifies that player, essentially, uh, because someone, if we just use the name and someone inputted the same name as someone else, we need something that's going to like uniquely identify them. Uh, so we're going to save that. And um, what I'm going to go down here now, I'm just going to turn off my little server, and I'm going to go server pod generate. Now, you do have to be in the server directory for this, as I am. And we'll see what happens here. So we'll see it actually made this player.dart file. And uh, that's cool. It's right here. It's good to go. Um, we don't have to touch it, but it's there. And that was just by you know configuring the data here. OK, so we have that. Um, there's a few other models we need. We need our question model, because this is going to be a trivia game. So we're going to go question.yaml, class question. And in this, uh, there's a few properties we need. Um, so we'll do fields, and uh, we'll have an ID, which will be an integer. And this will just be like an auto-incrementing number. You know, if this was saved in a database, it would be the primary key. Uh, we're going to have the actual question itself, which is a string. We're going to have answers. And here we can actually do things like list of string. So you can do, you know, mostly all the Dart primitives. Um, and then uh, we can do correct answer as an int. And that'll just be the index. Uh, you know, we'll store the correct answer as um, whatever one um, is here. So we'll save that. Um, before I generate, I'm just going to make uh, one more file as well. And uh, this one is going to just be called game state .yaml, class game state. Or, sorry, oops, class game state. 
and we need some fields. So here in our game state, we're going to have a list of all the players that are currently in the game. We're going to have questions or the question. So this is like the current question that's happening. Now notice here, I'm actually using a reference to this other model. Uh, so they don't have to just be like integers and strings and lists and stuff like that. We can actually reference other models here, which is really helpful. Uh, and then I also want to keep score or keep track of um, when the round will end. And I'm going to store this as just a Unix time code, so like a timestamp. Um, it just makes it easier to deal with, you know, time zones and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if we just normalize it to, you know, the a Unix time code timestamp. Um, okay, so we have our game state, so we can just run that again. And of course, you don't have to run it after each one you make. You can make a whole bunch of files and generate them all together. And um, as long as you don't have any issues, it should be fine. So we'll let that run for a second. See uh, all these models in here. So we have our question one, we have our game state, all that kind of stuff. So now let's.